Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar using MPCCI to model fluid structure interaction with Abacus and third party CFD tools. This is the second webinar out of our MPCCI webinar series, and it's the last webinar for this year. Um, just to give you guys an overview, this webinar will be about 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to have a Q&A session at the end. So if you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to ask us and we will do our best to answer your questions. Now, I would like to get started with a very brief introduction to VIAS. I'm sure you guys are already familiar with us. Okay, so we are, um, we provide engineering solutions, consult consulting and software solutions with experience in multiple industries, including energy process and utilities, aerospace, automotive, marine and offshore, um, industrial machinery, high tech, nuclear. Uh, we have a technical team that consists of experts in the field of design, manufacturing, systems integration, simulation, data analytics. We are headquartered in Houston and we have a presence throughout North America. Uh, we are also platinum partners with Deso Systems and we also resell Abacus, uh, Katia and other 3D experience solutions. Um, if you guys want to contact us, you can contact me directly at kfisa.viascorp.com. You can also send any questions to info at viascorp.com. Um, that's all I have um, for our introduction. And now I would like to pass on uh, the screen to Mr. Um, Pascal, who is joining us from Germany, and he is an MPCCI expert. He will be um, presenting the webinar today. Hi, Pascal. Hi, Kanyas. So. Okay, so good morning, everybody. So my name is Pascal Berzi. I'm working at the Fraunhofer Institute Sky. And um, as can you say, I'm uh, working uh, since uh, now some many years uh, with MPCCI. And today, um, I will show you how to use MPCCI to model fluid spectral interaction with Abacus and some third party CFD tools. So, today we will begin with the first introduction about some MPCCI products, the technology we use to do some co simulation between different um, simulation tools. And um, the main topics of today will focus on fluid structure interaction, and I will go through some examples that we have um, done in um, the past years. And um, okay, let's begin. So MPCCI is uh, provide a list of uh, multi-physics interfaces. Uh, we have uh, several products depending on the different application area. So depending on the needs and interaction level of your application, we have different approach to provide you a solution to simulate multi-physics in your application. From um, the first product is called MPCCI Copying Environment. So today we will see some more example using this, uh, this product. So this is um, a vendor neutral interface for copying of simulation code. Um, with this solution platform, you can do some bi-directional data transfer, which are uh, going over a socket communication and um, MPCCI will handle um, the non-matching interface geometry that uh, we can uh, provide uh, over the simulation tools. Um, doing co-simulation means um, that you have a different coupling scheme available, so according to your application and, and solution. So you can opt to either to use an explicit or iterative uh, implicit transient coupling scheme, but if you have some steady state um, problem, so you can use a steady state solution or mix um, different um, simulation codes or um, 
using a steady state uh, solution coupled with a transient solution, for example. And to set up your co-simulation environment, uh, MPCCI provide a GUI that will support you uh, during your co-simulation uh, configuration to set up your job and to um, start uh, the different um, solver on different machines, for example. So the second type of um, product we, we provide is called MPCCI FSI Mapper. So if your problem um, do not need uh, or do not have a strong interaction between the, the physics, and you only need, for example, to provide a solution um, from one simulation code as um, loads to the uh, second uh, simulation code. Um, this tool will be appropriate for, for your needs. Um, this is basically a file-based mapping, uh, which will read um, the CFD loads results that you have previously computed and map the data into uh, the FEA simulation code. So you can uh, map some pressure and thermal quantities. And um, at the end of the mapping, you will have a, a ready to use input deck that you can include in your FEA simulation code. And then the third uh, tools, um, which is an independent mapping tool for integrated simulation workflow. This mainly used from uh, manufacturing simulation to, to crash simulation. So here you can um, pass data through uh, file, uh, file information of a different simulation tool in, in that case. This is very close to the FSI mapper, but uh, applied to a different um, application area. OK, this is uh, the introduction about the technology that we can provide at Front for Sky for multi-physics simulation. Now let's have a detailed look on the MPCCI coupling environment. So co-simulation means interaction of different um, physics. And um, as MPCCI provide a neutral interface uh, solution and platform to couple uh, different commercial codes, as you can see on the slides, we have uh, mostly support of um, all the commercial codes in, uh, for fluid uh, simulation, for example. Um, we can have connection with ENSYS Fluent, OpenForm, Star System Plus, and also uh, fine turbo codes, for example. And um, on the structural side, we have more structural uh, mechanical codes like Abacus, ANSYS Mechanical, Nastron, and Mark. If you have some um, simulation in area of radiation for thermal coupling, we have uh, an interface to the tile term um, solver. And we can also include some electromagnetical simulation code like uh, Flux, GMAC, and ANSYS AMAX solver, or even extend your co-simulation uh, application level with some system model codes like Flowmaster or with MATLAB or with some uh, multi-body codes like MSC, Adam, Simpec, and um, even use some um, FMI um, modules. And of course, if you have your in-house code, MPCCI provide an interface to, to uh, integrate your code uh, in this um, ecosystem. Today, we will look uh, more in details uh, on fluid structure interaction. So we are interested in, in the discipline of fluid and structure. So what does a fluid structure interaction mean? So it means that um, we have a common interface which are um, in interaction. So on this interface, we will have some uh, quantities will, will be exchanged. Mainly in this kind of simulation, we will um, export at runtime the solution of the pressure distribution computed by the CFD uh, solver, which may be open form, fluent, or star system plus in our case. And this pressure distribution will be then applied, exp imported on the FEA side to compute 
um, the deformation due to, due to these um, pressure loads. So on our side, we can use abacus on this mechanical, even in also um, MSC last one. After the FEA has computed new deformation of the structure, we will pass the results back to the CFD model. And on the CFD model, the, the simulation code has to adapt the mesh to the new position sent by the FEA code. And um, either the CFD code has an, an available internal morphing technology, like in, in, with, uh, within Fluent or Stasis M+, or um, MPCCI can provide also a morpher modules, which is also integrated in, in open form to take into account um, the new position and um, deform the mesh of the CFD solution. And after getting this new uh, mesh in the CFD site, we can uh, repeat the loop again and uh, compute a new um, pressure distribution. And um, for the fluid structure interaction, we can uh, apply different coupling algorithms, um, depending, so if you have a transient or steady state uh, solution, you can um, use different communication for the data exchange, um, using, for example, a Gauss-Zeidel communication scheme or a Jacobi uh, communication scheme. So it will depend on the needs and requirement of the application. Okay, after introducing um, what the fluid structure interaction is, I will go through some ex example. So let's begin with the first example, which is a very basic example. And through this example, I will show you how um, the workflow um, based on APC CI looks like. So this is, um, we have a first um, a small um, elastic flap in a flow channel. And um, as you can see on the right left side, we have the flow inlet with a constant velocity. And due to the pressure distribution applied on this um, elastic flap, uh, you expect some deformation which will induce another new uh, pressure distribution around this flap. So in our case, on the CFD side, we will use um, the simulation code Fluent, which um, have an internal dynamic mesh option activated to take into account the deformation of the mesh. And on the right side, we will use uh, the Abacus simulation code. So as you can see on this, structural side, we just has um, the, the flap um, is only modeled. And on the top of the flap, we have a defined a fixed uh, boundary condition to, to fix the flap on the top channel. So now I will show you how we set up the problem by using the MPC GUI. So when you open the graphical interface in the first step, you have to select the simulation code you have to want to use. So first here we select the Abacus input deck and we click on the start scanner button, which will extract the boundary condition defined in your model. We'll do the same um, steps for the fluent code. So we have selected the code and after uh, passing the, uh, the boundary condition, you go to the um, coupling step um, level and select the boundary condition you want to couple. It. After defining the um, interface of co simulation, here you select, you define the quantities to exchange. So we want to send the nodal position and the pressure distribution um, for, from each simulation code. And then we assign the quantities we have defined on the target um, co-simulation interface. Now we can go to the go step, which um, mainly um, help you to define the, the coupling scheme you want to use. Here we have defined uh, the co-simulation with constant time step, for example. 
and we configure Fluent to start um, in a batch mode. So we select a journal file and activate some run, run parallel option. And after having defined uh, the option to start each simulation code, we save a project and we are ready to start the code simulation. So we need to click um, to activate the start of uh, each simulation. And um, when you start in an interactive mode, you have for each simulation um, a window which is popping up and showing the, the output of uh, each simulation. And as you can see, currently the MPCSI monitoring tool is um, starting automatically and you can observe the current exchange pressure distribution during the simulation. And the mesh deformation is also uh, applied um, directly on, in the monitor, monitoring tool. So that was the first brief introduction how to set up the, the co-simulation problem. And for each case, you have to, to repeat um, this uh, setup for, for your needs. Now, the second um, example is an hydraulic axial pump. So um, this is an example um, which have a complex CFD model and deal with the compressible liquids. So um, during um, a research project at the University of uh, Gdansk, a new actual uh, pump with a cam driven commutation unit was developed. Um, some prototypes uh, showed a good performance, but um, possibly harmful pressure peaks at the beginning of periods of disconnection. So here you can see um, the pressure which has been measured in, in the pump. So the pressure reached uh, very high values around 20 megapascal, and you can see here above the average of the, in the chamber for a very short time. Um, the speaks are influenced by many different factors. The most important ones are the displacement adjustment, the rotational speed and leakage. Um, when the displacement of the pump is decreased, the pressure peaks increase. So this is mainly due to the higher velocity of the piston when the chamber is disconnected from the intake and outtake channel. A high rotational speed of the shaft also lead to higher pressure peaks value, um, mainly because it, it's reduced the effect of um, leakage. So the oil leakage that is um, in the chamber, um, reduce the amount of the fluid to be compressed and thereby decrease the pressure peaks value also. But for fast rotating pumps, the piston movement is fast and the shortening uh, time uh, during which the fluid is compressed and reduce influence of leakage. This increase the pressure peaks value and um, the compressibility of the hydraulic oil is directly connected to the occurring leakage and thereby um, also plays an important role in the investigation of pressure peaks. Um, the pressure peak up to 20, 20 megapascal could damage the, the pump and produce a lot of noise. And to get more robust pump, um, the pressure peaks need to be compensated. So the idea is now to, um, to create or to have um, additional chamber to compensate these um, pressure peaks. Um, here in the first section uh, in the part A, um, we have the phase of compression. The compensation chamber is connected to the fluid volume in the cylinder, and the surplus fluid can flow from um, the 
cylinder chamber to the compensation chamber, and uh, which uh, should result in a reduction of the pressure peaks. And when the piston uh, is uh, moving back, in, it increases the volume and the cylinder chamber of the cylinder chamber and the compensation chamber again connects to the cylinder and the fluid can, can flow back. By using this uh, compensation chamber, we can uh, we observe a reduction by 50% of uh, the pressure peaks. So by um, now the next step will be to, to use some numerical simulation to optimize the shape and um, elasticity and, and volume of the chamber to minimize these uh, pressure peaks. So how we do the modeling of the CFD and FEA side. So on the CFD side, um, we have um, used, for example, a symmetric half model with two chamber. And we also um, did consider a full model with uh, seven chamber in, in fluent. On the FEA side, we just have a symmetric um, abacus model based on uh, using shell elements, which uh, just models elastic uh, chamber membrane. Now uh, we can visualize the results of the coupled uh, simulation compared to the CFD standalone simulation on Fluent. So we have put some um, monitor points on uh, the top of the chamber, in the middle um, um, composition uh, chamber, and at the bottom of the chamber in blue. So you can observe a big uh, negative uh, pressure uh, for, for each simulation. And this is probably due to the cavitation occurring at uh, the small passages between the different chambers. But um, basically what you can conclude is that um, the FSEI results um, provide a better, better fitted uh, uh, results to the experiment than the standalone CFD results. Now we have another type of application. So we will consider uh, an application of uh, a car spoiler from a racing car. So in that kind of application, uh, we have used, for example, um, the option to do some selective morphing. Um, this kind of large model has been integrated to run in a, on a cluster in a, in a batch system. And uh, I will, uh, just uh, mention how to use FSI mapper to do some uh, pre-check of your condition. So we have um, Formula One cars where we want to uh, consider the deformation on the rear spoiler. So in this example, the rear spoiler is made of uh, three elements attached to the side plate here. And this will be modeled as a symmetric uh, model. So we just have a half model for the co-simulation. On the CFD side, so we have uh, created the model with, for example, C samplers or open form. And the car is um, uh, based or is modeled in a long channel, about eight meter, and uh, is a size of the cars. And uh, within a long uh, 30 meters long channel. And we have used different uh, simulation uh, results, uh, steady state or transient, to, to couple with the structural side. On Abacus side, we just have model um, the spoiler because it is uh, the, de the part which is deformed. And, um, and the basic quantities we exchange are the coordinates and the pressure value. Um, in some uh, condition, uh, because this is a large uh, model which uh, required a very uh, a computational intensive safety uh, 
uh, resources for this kind of simulation. What we can do is if you have uh, a, pre a result for a pressure distribution for um, defined uh, drive speeds, you can uh, test um, the deformation that uh, you can uh, get from this pressure distribution and use MPC FSI mapper to uh, see how um, the deformation due to this kind of uh, pressure distribution will be uh, results. And um, it will be a first guess for you to, to verify if um, you will need to uh, do a bidirectional uh, cost simulation. If the information, if the deformation are important um, for your case, then uh, you can go on with the MPC side coupling environment. So in our case, uh, we mentioned that um, you can uh, activate a selective um, morphing. So when you applied uh, the deformation on um, the CFD side, you need a mesh uh, motion um, definition. Um, most uh, CFD code have uh, offer multiple methods to deform uh, and adapt um, the mesh deformation um, for the fluid domain. For open form, um, we have an alternative uh, MPC side mesh morpher solution, which is based on the spring based uh, uh, morphing method. And um, it's allow you to uh, to define and select only uh, a zone of your open form model to, um, to be morphed and avoid to consider the, the full uh, model. It allows you to save some computational time. So here you have, you can visualize um, the result of the coupled simulation. So um, it's showing, it shows actually the deformation um, um, of the spoiler. On the top side, you have uh, the FEA model, and below it is uh, the CFD model. So in this example, we have uh, used uh, CCM plus. Now um, this is uh, the pressure um, distribution um, of on the spoiler. So um, this can be uh, visualized by using the MPC side visualizer, which show you um, the results on the co-simulation interface. So some data about the, the size of the model. In our um, example, we have uh, on the CFD side, the model has about uh, 16 million cells. And uh, we uh, use, um, we have um, around 10 minutes per 50 iteration for a steady state uh, calculation running on 32 CPUs. On the FEA size, the model has um, 14,000 cells and it uh, needs uh, for each coupling uh, steps less than one minute to, to calculate the deformation on two CPUs. And on the co-simulation interface, uh, the size, the number of cells um, for the FES side are just also 40,000 cells. Uh, when we perform the co-simulation, um, we need uh, first to compute um, on the co-simulation interface to initialize um, the model, and it took around 12 seconds. And after, um, this step, um, the MPC side coupling environment uh, just needs less than one second to perform the, the mapping uh, job and then to send the result to on each uh, simulation code. Some, some benchmark about um, the morphing um, tools of MPC CI, it just uh, needs less than 20 seconds to deform um, the mesh of the spoiler. Um, these uh, tools is also used by uh, some um, um, uh, Formula One uh, cars. And uh, in real case, uh, models are very more larger than uh, in our example. You have to deal with uh, 100 million cells for the CFD side, 
model and the FEA mo model is uh, also very is larger and have to deal with some one million cells for example we cannot show some some results about the runtime because this is they are confidential so when we now compare uh, the results uh, from um, the FSI simulation and the CFD standalone uh, results, we have um, picked up some uh, drag and downforce coefficient on the spoiler. So as you can see, um, there is some, some difference. And um, the difference uh, of the FSI uh, solution uh, showing uh, more realistic uh, results and um, with this technology approach, you can capture more and more effects also. So the third example, we now move from a, a car application uh, to some uh, process simulation. So I will show you a glue process simulation. Um, this is a simulation uh, application which deal with a high density fluid with also a high viscosity property. And uh, in this case, we will use an implicit transient coupling uh, approach. And um, we'll also use a quasi-Newton technique to um, stabilize the solution and um, accelerate also the convergence of the solution. So um, let's look on the description of the problem. So basically you have um, two plates uh, of aluminum and in the middle you have a, a glue uh, which will be modeled and um, each uh, wall of the plate will be included um, in the co-simulation. On the CFD side you have a two, two inlet outlet on the left and right right side and the top plate uh, will move with a predefined so velocity and um, compress the, the glue fluid um, until uh, a total time of one second and um, we will use an initial initial time step for the co-simulation of one millisecond and Basically, in average, for this kind of simulation, we will need about uh, 15 um, coupling step uh, per time step. So for each model, um, now you have again on the left side the CFD model. The glue part um, is defined um, as um, high viscous and density uh, fluid medium. Uh, on CFD, we will use open form uh, solver code uh, with interdim form. We have about uh, 32,000 um, elements. We use uh, the morphing uh, in from open form based on velocity Laplacian um, method. And we will exchange the pressure results and nodal coordinates. On Abacus side, we have um, um, so, uh, some solid elements. We have about 20,000 nodes and 15,000 elements. The material used um, is aluminum. And uh, for this kind of uh, co-simulation, we will use an iterative coupling approach for, the, for modeling the dynamic process because we have um, um, incompressible fluid on, 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 in our case, it will introduce some numerical instabilities and um, what we also known under the edit mass effect. So you can also have these um, instabilities if you have um, a density ratio between the fluid and structure uh, side which is near one and in that case uh, when you do uh, explicit uh, coupled uh, co-simulation you won't be able to get a solution because um, of this edit mass effect so by the explicit um, 
approach, you will exchange a solution just one per time step uh, in opposite to the implicit uh, couple approach, which um, is conditionally stable because you will um, exchange several time uh, until you converge and proceed to the next time step. So this kind of approach uh, will uh, require potentially a lot of inner iteration uh, per time step. So let's have a look on um, some techniques, the quasi-Newton techniques to, to uh, stabilize the solution and also accelerate the convergence. So the quasi-Newton is a kind of relaxation um, method. So you have on the top the structural codes and on the bottom the CFD codes. So when you um, begin the time step, the structural codes send the first deformation to the fluid codes, will, which compute according to this um, deformation, a new pressure distribution, P, and send the pressure distribution back to the structural codes. It's result a new um, deformation of the mesh, and uh, we will repeat this um, interaction um, in time until we reach a convergence. And when the convergence is uh, reached, we proceed to the next time step. So this um, pressure, which has been uh, computed by the fluid solution, will be uh, relaxed. And um, here, this is a classical relaxation so, uh, formula. So you have um, um, the relaxation factor omega, which will be applied on the quantities um, x tilde. And um, at the end of uh, the loop, um, you have to verify that um, the value that you have uh, relaxed and the value that uh, has been provided by the CFD codes if they are nearly equal or satisfying the convergence um, tolerance, then um, your time step is uh, finished and you can go to the next time step. Um, the quasi-Newton uh, approach differs to the classical uh, relaxation uh, approach because it takes into account um, the local um, um, variation so for, for each um, element, we will uh, apply the relaxation and we use uh, a linear approximation of uh, the re error resulting from the non monolithic coupling. And this allow to, um, to stabilize and accelerate uh, the convergence. So now we are uh, we see a results of the cost simulation. So you see that the, the plate is pressed, it's going down, and the, the glue is, uh, spread, is spraying out. In this slide, um, this is the result of um, uncoupled simulation, so at the, the final uh, time of one second. So you can observe how the size of uh, the glue distribution after the process uh, finished. And if we uh, compare to the coupled simulation, you see that the radius um, of the coupled simulation is uh, smaller than the uncoupled results. So now, again, the comparison uh, of the two simulations. So on the top, the uncoupled simulation. So you don't take into account the deformation on the lower plate. So you can see the uh, large difference of the results. And um, the second option we have applied to accelerate the total simulation time, we have used an adaptive coupling time step um, option. So our codes um, has run in, in parallels. We have 
in our example, use two uh, threads on Abacus site and four processes on for the CFD open form solution. And um, the plot is showing um, how the time step uh, size um, um, progress over the simulation time of one second. So you can see that um, at the beginning we by using an adaptive coupling time step, which uh, can vary from um, 10 minus five seconds to um, 10 minus two seconds. And you can see that the simulation so quickly uh, increase the simulation of uh, the simulation time step size to, to the maximum value that we have uh, predefined. And when uh, around at 0 0.3 seconds, when the glue is going to spread out, we see that the time step is decreasing and um, so the problem is more, more difficult to solve and need to, to um, by decreasing the time step, you get a more accurate solution. But at the end, by comparing the method using a constant coupling time step, and the adaptive time step, you can see that we can reduce by a factor of three the total simulation uh, uh, required for this kind of application. So now the, the last example um, is um, about a bottle drop test. Uh, we have a high speed dynamics um, um, application uh, using also a MOF model on the CFD side. We will also use an implicit transient coupling approach and include, which include a quasi-Newton um, technique. Um, this work has uh, been realized uh, in, um, for within a master thesis. So in this work, we have uh, compared different FSI methods. So on Abacus side, we, we use, um, for example, the CEL method and also uh, do some simulation based on the SPH uh, approach of Abacus. And the three method will be compared and we have set up um, the drop test for different heights, 20 centimeters and 60 centimeters. And uh, we have also on the structural side use different uh, wall thickness. So uh, one with a homogeneous distribution and one model with some heterogeneous uh, distribution of the thickness. Um, because of we are half interested uh, on the drop test, we have only a simulation time of 0 0.04 seconds. And for the implicit coupling, we have choose a um, small time step of um, 10 minus five seconds with uh, the quasi-Newton uh, work station method. So on the FES side, we uh, use uh, as material of the bottle, uh, the HDPE uh, material. And um, the bottle has been modeled with uh, shell elements. On the CFD side, we use um, inter team form solver um, with uh, incompressible liquids. So we have the, the water liquid, which is um, defined in, in open form. And uh, we have um, do some measurement on the bottle. So one, we have observed the, the, the height of uh, the deformation of uh, the bottle on the uh, Z axis and on the Y axis to see how the deformation occurs. So this is the result of um, the monitoring of the different uh, um, deformation points. So on the left side, you see the deformation on the Y axis. So how um, the bottle uh, behave. So the green line show um, the experimental uh, results captured by um, a video. And um, on the blue, 
line show you the result of the abacus CAL uh, uh, calculation. The red line is the SPH uh, method and the black line um, are showing uh, the coupled uh, simulation results. So this is a plot for a um, drop height of um, 60 centimeters and the bottle has uh, a homogeneous uh, wall thickness uh, distribution. On the right side, you can see um, the deformation or the, uh, yes, the deformation of um, the bottle on the Z axis. So you can see how um, high the bottle are uh, jumping back after the, the drop. And you can s observe that um, the co-simulation results and with are very close to the um, experimental measurement as well as the CL uh, method provided by Abacus. Uh, in our case, the SPH method uh, do not agree very well with um, the experimental measurement. Now, so if you have a focus on um, the lateral deformation of the bottle, we can see that um, all uh, the simulation uh, results um, for this setup uh, provide a different um, behavior on uh, the y-axis. So it provides a positive deformation um, uh, in opposite to the negative uh, deformation observed by the experiment. Um, now we can uh, observe uh, results for 20 centimeters uh, drop height. And we have uh, used a different uh, uh, thickness distribution on um, the bottle side. So we have um, on the left side, again, the deformation on the y-axis. And um, you can observe that now the the plot of uh, the lateral deformation um, can be better uh, captured on, on, uh, for the co-simulation. So if we go here, so you can see that uh, using uh, different um, thickness um, definition, the co-simulation uh, deformation uh, results are closer to, to the measurement and um, Abaco solution used based on CEL and SPH method uh, still uh, provide different behavior. So again, to, to uh, compare the both uh, uh, the influence of the wall thickness, so we can observe that um, the modeling of um, the structural side is very important to, to, uh, to catch the reality of um, the drop test. And um, now we, you can see a comparison of um, the surface uh, of the fluid at um, 20 milliseconds. So this is a drop test at uh, 60 centimeters. So on the left side, you can see the CL method which uh, looks also close to the experiment uh, results. The SPH method um, cannot be um, compared. It uh, shows different uh, result of the surface of the water. The cost simulation results also ag agree very well with experiment. And um, we, from this, um, work, we can conclude that the FSI simulation provides a um, better approach to capture the, the effects of uh, the water inside the, the bottle. So now we can see a short animation of the co-simulation results. So on the left side, this is uh, for the small height at 20 centimeters. And on the right side, it was 60 centimeters. Both has been uh, computed with an heterogeneous wall thickness. 
So now I read uh, my conclusion of the presentation. So we have seen uh, some example of couple simulation and uh, we have uh, get an introduction about how to set up the problem by using the MPC side GUI. So basically you have used uh, two standalone models and um, set up and define them um, in the GUI to create your co-simulation application. Um, MPCCI provides some monitoring option to uh, follow the progression of your co-simulation during the calculation, either during um, your simulation process or in an offline uh, mode. Each simulation codes are able and continue to write their results in their own um, format, like um, the ODB file for Abacus. And um, we have seen that we can uh, use uh, the FSI mapper to uh, check if uh, we, whether the FSI um, uh, interaction is necessary for, for your application. So you can uh, reduce your simulation time and um, optimize your, your the usage of your license and uh, also the usage of your HPC resource. And um, through this example, we saw that the FSI approach um, includes more physical effects uh, than uh, standalone FEA solution or a CFD uh, solution. And the, the prediction uh, provided by uh, the coupled approach um, are better for uh, for the product design and are closer to the real world. So I have finished my presentation. So now uh, we can move to uh, Q&A if you have some, some question. So, Kenis, can you take over? Yes. So, guys, we are taking questions now. If you have any um, questions or any comments about the presentation, please let us know. Okay, it seems like we do have a question about the MPCCI FSI mapper. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about um, this feature? The MPCI FSI mapper is um, a simple um, standalone tools, which um, is a file-based mapping. So you, you select um, as uh, the MPCI coupling environment the, directly the results of your simulation code. So you have uh, results of a CFD uh, simulation codes and that we want to um, map on the structural side to, to map the, either the pressure distribution or temperature um, distribution. This is uh, mainly what uh, you can do. And at the end, you get, um, after the mapping has occurred, um, for the structural codes and new input deck results that you can include in your, your, your model and uh, run it in a standalone. The process with the FSI mapper is uh, very fast, so this is an interactive process. And um, the mapping occurs in a, within, um, within a minute. So. Okay, thank you for answering that. We have another inquiry asking about pricing information. So I have noted your information down and I can get back to you after the webinar. Um, do we have any other questions? We are still taking questions.
Okay, it seems like we don't have any uh, questions anymore. So we can go ahead and conclude this webinar. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, this webinar was recorded and you will receive a recording shortly. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation, um, Pascal. And um, I hope you guys have a great day.